good. Hi, this is Mike Lipnick from University of California, San Francisco. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensivist, and I'm gonna walk through a couple of ventilators here with you to demonstrate some features, some key differences between transport ventilators and what some people might consider a more traditional ICU ventilator setup. We'll run through oxygen supplies, the consumables, the circuits, and the humidification systems. First, we'll start with this traditional ICU ventilator. Uh, draw your attention to the back. Most commonly, traditional ICU ventilator is gonna have two gas inputs, high pressure gas inputs to the back. Air, compressed air, and compressed 100% oxygen. These are generally gonna go into a wall source, although could also come off of the regulator from a, a tank, which would also be considered a high pressure oxygen source. Also to note on this ventilator, most traditional ICU ventilators have a, a large screen that displays a lot of information here, as well as menus that can be navigated to customize it to the patient. These traditionally are dual limbs, so an inspiratory and expiratory limb coming out of the circuit. You'll notice both have viral filters on here. The inspiratory limb first goes through an active heated humidification system to heat the air, provide moisture so that the patient's airways don't dry out and so that secretions don't get dried in the endotracheal tube, which can cause it to obstruct, which can be a serious, even life-threatening event. Um, next, we'll walk over to uh, another ventilator. This is the LTB-1200 transport ventilator. There are a couple of key features to, to note here with this vent. Um, first is, it has a similar oxygen connection as our ICU ventilator over here. This connects to the same wall source, although similar to the other ventilator, can also connect directly into an oxygen cylinder, which I have down here below. What you'll notice though, is I don't have this connected to the ventilator at this time. Right now the vent is running and is sucking in room air through this port here, through a turbine and providing at pressure oxygen through the system here but again, room air, 21% oxygen. If I wanna get a higher concentration of oxygen, I need to provide it with the source of oxygen. And my options are to use this connection into a tank or into the wall, in which case it can deliver the same amount of oxygen as this, this device, or I can use a low flow oxygen source, such as what we have here, which is an oxygen concentrator. Generally, these run between five and 10 liters per minute. And I can take the Christmas tree tapered adapter off of a standard Thorpe tube, connect that to the oxygen inlet here on the LTV, and then with smooth bore oxygen tubing, go ahead and connect that straight into my low pressure oxygen source. And if I run that at five liters per minute, I can deliver about 50% oxygen concentration. If I run it at 10 liters per minute, which some of these are capable of doing, I can get up to about 70, 75% inspired fraction of oxygen. So this ventilator is currently running, as you can see, um, it's not plugged into the wall. Uh, it's running off of internal battery pack, and it also has an external, uh, two external spare batteries here, so it has a, a relatively good, long uh, backup battery life. Back to the ICU ventilator. Uh, the ICU ventilator is plugged into the wall right now. I can unplug this ventilator. It'll give me an alarm, but it does have a battery that will last for some time um, to continue ventilating the patient. Uh, sometimes these ventilators, these batteries don't last quite as long as the transport ventilators, but there's variation in that. I'll go ahead and plug it in. But the other thing to note is with this ventilator, if I disconnect it from our high pressure oxygen source, so our high pressure air source is out, it's going to give us an alarm to tell us that it's not happy that our air supply pressure is down, but it's still getting high pressure, 100% oxygen, so it continues to run. But if for some reason our oxygen cylinder or our central supply of oxygen were to run out, which I'll simulate here, as you can see here, the ventilator simply stops running. This ventilator does not have a built-in turbine or compressor and so cannot run without a high pressure oxygen source. Some ICU ventilators do have built-in compressors or component compressors that can be added onto the ventilators. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this back to source. And the ventilator will begin again. So back over to the LTV setup here. Again, I can unplug it just the same way, it'll run off the battery, but I can unplug it from all air connections or oxygen connections and the vent will continue to run. 
just delivering the room air concentration of oxygen. You'll notice if you come in close, uh, the display on the LTV here is generally what you'll see. It's a relatively basic display that gives you the information. Um, it will cycle through the settings. It will cycle through the tidal volume, the frequency of breaths, um, some of the other important information I can do by pressing some of these buttons to maneuver the ventilator to give me data about the patient. There is also an external display that has been made for this vent in the past, which provides a more similar experience to using a more traditional ICU ventilator. These displays, however, are difficult to come by and potentially no longer being manufactured. There are a couple other things to consider with differences between these ventilators. You'll notice that the LTV, like many transport ventilators, is a single limb circuit. Um, coming out of the machine on this side, we have our viral filter. Um, air comes out of the machine and goes to the patient. On the expiratory limb, the expiratory limb doesn't connect back to the machine in the same way that it does for our dual limb ICU ventilator. In this machine, the active PEEP valve is right here. So this is controlling some of the pressure in the circuit. Whereas in a dual limb setup, that pressure is actually controlled inside the machine where the, the expiratory limb re-enters the, the device. This also has a couple of additional tubes that you can see here. And these tubes are transducer tubes to measure pressure and also a pressure tube to control this PEEP valve. Of note, some single limb, there are many different types of single limb circuit. Um, this particular circuit is a proprietary circuit specific to this ventilator. Um, there are other versions of the LTV uh, that do not have an active PEEP valve and have a manual valve. And you'll notice that difference because there is not one of these tubings connecting it back to the machine. Also, you'll notice another difference between our transport ventilator and our uh, traditional ICU ventilator here, and that is humidification. All of these systems need a humidification mechanism. Here we're using a humidification moisture exchange filter or HME filter, um, or just a heat moisture exchanger rather, excuse me. This HME will prevent uh, moisture and heat from going back into the circuit and being lost to the room. Whereas again, if we look back at our ICU ventilator, this has a more complex setup that heats and humidifies the circuit a bit more effectively. This type of setup also requires electricity and distilled water um, to be changed quite regularly. With this setup, these, these HMEs do need to be changed regularly as well, according to the manufacturer's specifications. On top of the HME, you will notice another viral filter, and this is to prevent any viral particles from leaving the patient and going out the expiratory limb. This viral filter can be placed near the PEEP valve here, although sometimes it can be difficult to disconnect the PEEP valve and insert it in the circuit here. Check out the manufacturer's specifications and tip sheet for how to do that. The last bit of equipment that I'm gonna show here is a relatively, uh, another transport ventilator. This is uh, the Eagle One, a relatively older um, version of the Zoll 731. Um, this ventilator, much like the LTV, can function without being connected to a gas source or being connected to a power source. It's a compressor driven ventilator, which means it will suck in air from the ambient room at 21% concentration oxygen. It will compress it and then it will deliver it to the patient. The display here is relatively more simple. And because it's a compressor ventilator, you'll notice it's louder than the other vents. This particularly older model is markedly louder. Newer compressor driven ventilators are quieter. As I turn it on, you'll hear the pump. It will begin to suck air in and deliver breath to our patient. This circuit is also a single limb circuit, similar to the LTV. It too has additional tubes, but you'll notice this only has two tubes, a pressure sensor and another tube that controls the peep valve. The peep valve again is built into the expiratory limb of this circuit. Most important thing here I want to comment on, I don't have an HME filter in here or a viral filter, both of which are needed just like on the other models that I showed. And lastly, this single limb circuit cannot be used on the other ventilator and vice versa. The last thing that I'll point out here is there are different setups for single limb, standard single limb circuits that can be used on ventilators like this Eagle or the Zoll 731, um, although the manufacturer uh, we'll have specifications on which ventilators they would prefer. Thanks very much.